Welcome to this next video in the playlist on ring theory. In this video, what we're going to talk about is polynomial rings that are unique factorization domains. In particular, uh, the actual theorem that we're going to prove is that if you start off with a unique factorization domain, okay, so let's start off with a ring, capital R, which is a unique factorization domain, then if you construct the ring of polynomials over this unique factorization domain R, what we want to prove is that that ring of polynomials is also going to be a unique factorization domain. Okay, so this is the big theorem, that if R is a unique factorization dom uh, domain, that it implies that R adjoin X, the ring of polynomials with coefficients from the ring, capital R, is also a unique factorization domain. Okay, and this isn't completely trivial to prove. Okay, so we're going to uh, dedicate a video to proving this theorem. Okay, right. Uh, so, firstly, let's just remind ourselves of the definition of a unique factorization domain. So, remember, a unique factorization domain is a special type of ring. Okay, it's an integral domain fundamentally. Okay, so I'll just write this down. So, a unique factorization domain must be an integral domain. And remember, an integral domain is a non zero commutative ring, which also obeys the property that whenever you multiply together two non zero elements in that uh, ring, uh, you always Ways end up with a non-zero answer. Okay, in an integral domain, the only way of multiplying two elements together and getting zero as the answer is if one or both of the elements that you're multiplying together is already zero. Okay, uh, so uh, you start off with an integral domain, one of these special non-zero commutative rings, and then on top of that, we want another property to be true. And this other property that we want to be true is that all elements in the unique factorization domain, okay, uh, apart from the additive identity. So for all elements apart from the additive identity, it must be possible to factorize the elements, so I'll call the arbitrary element here little r, into a product of irreducibles with a unit out the front. So we often write this like so, a unit times uh, an irreducible here to a certain power alpha 1 times another irreducible p2 to the power of alpha 2 all the way along to pn alpha to the n here. And of course this has to be a finite product, so it's not allowed to go on and on forever. Okay, now remember, uh, the definition of an irreducible uh, is an element for which there are, well, whenever you have a product that gives that element, the product has to be reasonably trivial. It has to be a product of a unit uh, in the ring uh, with an associate of that element that you're trying to make. Okay, you can't ever find two non-unit elements to multiply together and give that element. Okay, so remember that's the definition of an irreducible element, and uh, that applies in an arbitrary non-zero commutative ring, so it certainly applies in our integral domain here. Okay, uh, so in a unique factor factorization domain, it must be the case that all elements can be factorized in this way, so a unit out the front with a string of irreducibles in this way, okay, uh, and note that if this is a unit itself, then it will be a fairly trivial factorization, it will just be itself is equal to itself, but if it's not a unit, then it will have some irreducibles there, uh, and this factorization must be unique up to uh, the fact that you can tinker around with which associates of the irreducibles you're using, and you might also have to tinker around with the unit out the front. Okay, but you can't majorly change this. Okay, if you have two different um, factorizations into irreducibles of an element, you can change one into the other just by tinkering around with which associates of the irreducibles you're using and tinkering around with the unit at the front in a unique factorization domain. So that's what we mean uh, by the factorization being unique, and it's very important that the factorization is unique. Okay, so in a unique factorization domain, this factorization exists is the first thing, and secondly, it's unique up to the fact that you can tinker around with which associates you're using. Okay, so we're assuming that these two things are true in this uh, start-off ring here, capital R, and what we want to prove is that this polynomial ring, R adjoin X here, is also a unique factorization domain. Now the first bit's very easy, okay, uh, because we know that whenever we take the ring of polynomials over an integral domain, the answer is always an integral domain back again. Okay, so we know that this ring of polynomials, R adjoin X, is going to be an integral domain, so that's okay. 
we've got that it's an integral domain, what we now want to prove is the difficult bit, that all elements firstly have a uh, factorization into irreducible, so all non-zero elements do indeed have a factorization like this. And secondly, uh, we want to prove that uh, this is unique up to the fact that you can use uh, different associates of the irreducibles. Okay, so that's what uh, we're going to work on here. Okay, so uh, let's now begin. Okay, so we're going to consider the elements of this ring of polynomials r adjoin x here. Okay, so I'm going to divide this initially into two broad classes of elements. Firstly, there are the constant polynomials, and then there are the non-constant polynomials. So we'll start off with the constant polynomials, okay, because this is the easier bit, and then we'll move on to the non-constant polynomials, which is where uh, the uh, more ingenious tactics come into the proof. Okay, so let's start off with constant polynomials and try and show uh, that all constant polynomials are indeed going to have a factorization and that this is going to be unique. Well, the brilliance here is that actually the constant polynomials is just this initial ring sitting inside of here, okay, and really adding on all those other elements. So adding on all of the polynomials that are non-constant has absolutely no effect on um, the constant polynomials, and the reason it has really no effect on, for instance, questions like which constant polynomials are irreducible or not, is because whenever you multiply two elements together, okay, so let's just write this down, whenever you multiply two elements of this ring of polynomials together, so a of x and b of x, whenever you multiply them together, the degree of that is always going to be the degree of a of x plus the degree of b of x. Let me just write this down. So if we consider what the degree of the product of two polynomials is, it's going to be the degree of a of x plus the degree of b of x. We know that this is true whenever you take uh, a ring of polynomials where the coefficient ring is an integral domain. Okay, so this statement is always true provided that the coefficient ring uh, is an integral domain. Now, uh, what does that actually mean then? Uh, well, it's going to mean that the other polynomials cannot possibly affect um, the constant polynomials, because if you end up with a constant polynomial, so let's imagine that we've multiplied two polynomials, a of x and b of x together, and we've got a constant polynomial. So the answer is a constant polynomial. So let's say that a of x times b of x here is a constant poly, okay? Uh, then, of course, the degree of that will just be zero. The degree of a constant polynomial is just zero. So that must have meant that the degree of these two polynomials, a of x and b of x, were also zero, because remember, uh, of course, that, uh, and we're assuming, of course, that we're not using the zero polynomials. So a of x and b of x are not zero here, okay? The degree of a of x times b of x will always equal the degree of a of x plus the degree of b of x, okay? Uh, so if we've got a constant poly here, then the degree of that's going to be zero, and these two are not zero, um, zero polynomials, so the degree of those um, must be a non-zero, uh, sorry, a non-negative integer, okay, and the only possibility is that both of these are actually degree zero, and that means that these two things had to be constant polynomials, so what was all of this in aid of? Basically, this entire argument was in aid of trying to show you that if you multiply two polynomials together, in this ring of polynomials, r adjoin x, and get a constant polynomial, then those two polynomials you multiply together must have been constant polynomials themselves. So what does that mean? That all the other polynomials, all of the non-constant polynomials in here, they really have absolutely nothing to do with the constant polynomials. You cannot take a non-constant polynomial over here and multiply it by any other polynomial, constant or not, and get a constant polynomial back again. The only way that you can make the degree go down really is multiplying by zero, and, and that's silly. We're not, we're not even talking about that. Okay, so what I'm trying to explain to you is that really um, the constant polynomials are not affected at all by adding on all of these non-constant polynomials. So if a constant polynomial was irreducible, for instance, over here, uh, then it will still be irreducible here, because remember the definition of irreducible is that all the products which um, make it uh, have to involve a unit and an associate of that element. 
okay? Uh, now there are going to be no additional products over here which can possibly make a certain constant polynomial, because as I've shown you, adding on all of these non-constant polynomials doesn't change it in the slightest. You can't multiply a non-constant polynomial by any other polynomial and get a constant polynomial back again, okay? So that argument basically is for the fact that irreducibles over here are still irreducibles over here. And indeed, any element here will still have the same factorization into irreducibles over here. Okay, so all of the constant polynomials are still going to have their same factorization into irreducibles as they had over here. Okay, so because this is a unique factorization domain, all of the elements in here have uh, a unique factorization, and they're going to have the same one over here. And I've just argued for the fact that adding on all of those non-constant polynomials does not change that in the slightest. Okay, and this is why, because whenever uh, you use a non-constant polynomial to multiply with, you are never going to end up with a constant polynomial. Okay, right. Uh, so, um, the constant polynomials are fine. They're going to have the exact same unique factorization as we had before. Okay, so we only really need to worry then about the non-constant polynomials. Okay, so now let's turn our attention to the non-constant polynomials. We now want to prove that all non-constant polynomials are going to have a factorization into irreducibles and that this factorization into irreducibles is going to be unique up to the fact that you can use different associates. Okay, right. Uh, so now let's take an arbitrary non-constant polynomial then and let's say that this arbitrary non-constant polynomial now is going to be called P of X here. Okay, so it's some element from our ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain R here. Okay, and what I now want to do is show you firstly that a factorization into irreducibles exists and then what I want to do is show you that it's going to be unique uh, up to the fact that you can use different associates. Okay, so how are we going to approach this? Uh, well, we know that this is a non-constant polynomial. That's the first thing that we know about it. I'm going to actually modify it into a form that's going to be easier for us to actually prove what we need to prove. Okay, I'm going to take it and turn it into a primitive polynomial. And what we'll then show is that the primitive polynomial can then be factorized into uh, a bunch of irreducibles and that this is unique. Okay, so what do I mean by turning it into a primitive polynomial? Well, this is best understood if we actually write it out explicitly. So let's write our polynomial p of x here out explicitly. So we'll have p0 as our first coefficient here, plus p1 times x, plus, and then we'll go all the way up to pn x to the n here. So we'll suppose that the degree of the polynomial here uh, is n. Okay, so uh, to turn this polynomial, which is an arbitrary polynomial then, into a primitive polynomial, what I want to do is pull out a constant from this polynomial, pull out an element from my coefficient ring, capital R, the unique factorization domain, uh, and what I want, what I end up with then left over, I want to be a primitive polynomial. Now remember the definition of a primitive polynomial. A primitive polynomial is a non-constant polynomial. Now of course, when I pull out uh, a, you know, a element of the coefficient ring from this, a constant from this, it's not going to change the fact that this is a non-constant polynomial, so I'll still have a non-constant polynomial here, so that's fine. Uh, the other part being primitive is that the, or there can be no, there's no common divisor of all of the coefficients of the polynomial that is not uh, a unit, basically, okay? The only common divisor is a unit. Uh, so what does that mean? That means that when you look at these coefficients and you split them down into their unique factorizations in the coefficient ring, capital R, uh, none of the irreducibles can be shared between the coefficients. Okay, the only thing that can be pulled out is a unit. So really, to turn this polynomial P of X into a primitive polynomial, what I want to do is pull out the greatest common divisor. Okay, I want to write it as D times, let's say, P prime of X, where p prime of x is now going to be my primitive polynomial. And d here is going to be the greatest common divisor. So where am I going to get that from? Um, well, what I'm going to do, what you can imagine doing, is taking all of these coefficients, so the p0, the p1, all the way up to the pn here, 
and writing them as their factorization into irreducibles. So they all have a unique factorization into irreducibles. Write them all out and then look for which irreducibles are shared amongst them all. Okay, so look for which irreducibles are in all of their irreducible factorizations and pull that bit out and take the absolute maximum that you can take out, basically. Okay, so find every single irreducible um, that is shared in all of them to whatever power it's shared in all of them and pull that out and that's what you've got here. Okay, now of course you could also pull out a unit uh, but you don't need to bother doing that. Okay, you can pull out a unit if you like and indeed the greatest common divisor is only unique up to the fact that you can uh, multiply it by a unit. Okay, but uh, all I want you to be sure of is that you get absolutely all of the irreducibles that are common to all of these coefficients. Okay, so D here is going to be the greatest common divisor of all of my coefficients, P0, P1, all the way up to Pn. Okay, and we know how that works in a unique factorization domain. All you need to do is come up with their unique factorizations into irreducibles and take uh, the maximum uh, that you can out of all of them, okay? All of the irreducibles to all of the powers that are shared in all of them, you have to pull all of that out and then multiply the, all of those irreducibles that were common to all of them together and you'll end up with this greatest common divisor of them all. Okay, and the thing that you will end up with here, this will indeed be primitive because now all that's left that you can pull out of it uh, is going to be a unit. You cannot pull anything else out of it, otherwise you fail to do what I told you to do, which was pull out all of the irreducibles that were common. Okay, so if this wasn't primitive, uh, then uh, you wouldn't have done what I had told you to do. Okay, uh, now of course, this D here, it of course can be factored down into its uh, factorization in terms of irreducibles. Indeed, when we pulled it out in this way, when we uh, when we reduced all of these coefficients into their irreducible factorizations and then took all of the irreducibles which were common to all of them, okay, if we didn't bother to actually multiply it all back together, then we'd already have its factorization into irreducibles. But if you did bother to multiply them all together, all you'd have to do then is apply the fact that R is a unique factorization domain and split it back down into its factorization into irreducibles. So this can be written as a factorization of irreducibles. All of those elements are still irreducible in the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain R, so that's absolutely fine. We can split D into its uh, irreducible factorization in our polynomial ring. All we now need to turn our attention to is splitting this primitive polynomial down into its uh, factorization in terms of irreducibles, and it's that that we will turn our attention to in the next video. So in the next video, we will start with a primitive polynomial that is a non-constant polynomial, and we will show that we can write it uh, as a factorization of irreducibles, and then we'll go on to show that that is unique.